if for whatever reason you ask some friends, hey, what's the most radioactive place you can think of? Be prepared to learn an unfamiliar branch of science in a very short period of time. Life is strange, you never know when you'll need to ask that question, and they very well may deliver. I mentioned this cautionary tale because I was recently in need of an answer to that particular question, and when I asked, oh, did they deliver? I'm just on the border of the boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens, that unassuming storefront is Primo's auto body repair, and it is the most radioactive place in all of New York City. Other than answering the obvious questions of how and why a car repair shop becomes radioactive, I thought this was going to be a relatively straightforward video about an interesting fact. But when I set out to answer those questions, this became, well, a cautionary tale. This is a story about power, especially the power of information, because what happens to the people who work and live here will be the result of over a century of collective decisions made by people who held the power to choose what type of information was appropriate to communicate and when, as well as how much influence people in power should have over literal power. Yeah, this escalates very quickly into... Metal bomb. Pink bomb. And high bursts. But it starts here. Over a century ago, Primo's auto body repair was the center of the Wolf Alport Chemical Company, which specialized in treating imported mazonite sand, which contains the metals that were in demand during the Industrial Revolution. Mazenite sand also contains the radioactive element thorium. No one had any use for thorium. There was no protocol for dealing with the waste, so wolf workers at Wolf Outport dumped it in the city's sewer system and they buried it under this block. They actually weren't breaking any laws. They were following the closest they had to an industry standard. But after World War II, thorium went from sewer-worthy waste to very valuable when the Atomic Energy Commission, an offshoot of the Manhattan Project, that Manhattan Project that made those first nuclear bombs, started buying all the thorium they could find to experiment with as an energy source for bombs. This is where the tale becomes truly cautionary because yes, this is about the dangers a radioactive place poses to the public, but we, members of the public, assess risk and base our actions on the information we have. In the 20th century, before information was publicly accessible, when it was held by government agencies and could be delivered solely to serve a purpose rather than communicate truth, it could be potentially weaponized. The radioactive thorium produced here was shipped to a test site in Nye County, Nevada, about 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. So that's close enough that the mushroom clouds became a popular tourist attraction. But watching nuclear bombs go off is not for everyone, and not everyone had a choice in the matter. In 1955, likely in response to a number of very concerned locals and accustomed to nuclear explosions, the Atomic Energy Commission distributed a pamphlet that began with a message to the people who live near the Nevada test site, featuring some fun cartoons of mushroom clouds and thanked local residents for accepting the risk without fuss. It went on to describe that risk in a very particular way, perhaps best exemplified by the sentence many people who were severely injured by bomb radiation in Japan during World War II apparently made good recoveries, followed by the very intentional omission of the tens of thousands who made no recovery at all. For local residents, prolonged exposure wasn't opt-in, nor is it for those pairing cars here at Primo's. It's clear from articles and interviews that everyone who works here is aware of the risk, but while it's significant, it's not what they're most concerned about. Decades of unclear communication with various agencies have led to an uncertain future. When the Environmental Protection Agency installed six-inch deep plates of iron and steel over radioactive hotspots at Primo's as a temporary fix, the shop lost weeks of business. Further intervention could only bring more loss. The question on everyone's minds was, how much more? After three years without clear answers, the Environmental Protection Agency's final statement on the matter included the decision to demolish these buildings and relocate businesses. For people whose livelihoods had already been damaged by efforts to clean up the mess made decades before they were even born, that means things are only going to get a lot worse before they can get better. You could easily frame this as the government mishandling information. You could debate whether or not the Atomic Energy Commission used misleading rhetoric to endanger lives in Nevada. But it's important to remember, it's not possible to communicate every side of a story. 
What gets communicated in a situation at a given time is not an accurate reflection of what happened. After World War II, it made sense to downplay the risk of radiation to concern residents. Perhaps it made sense to withhold certain information from business owners here until a final decision was made. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying that rationale was fair or even ethical. Perhaps it was. That's just how the people in charge at the time saw it best to summarize the information and pass it down. So what do we do? Because it might not be radiation, but there will always be some contaminant to clean up or something that can be made better to help the world progress. In the age of publicly available digital information, knowledge about projects in our communities is available to pretty much everyone, not just the people who hold the power to make decisions that affect us. Any extreme is dangerous, especially if it's in the form of an opinion. So if you ever feel what you're being told is a one-sided story, that information is out there. Find it, evaluate it for yourself, try to piece together the whole story. And if you do, then question what you're being told. If for no other reason, then you can. It's too late to change what will happen here. Evidently, not everything has gone according to plan as the buildings are still standing. As for the most recent timeline, I have no idea. <laughs> I called the Primos a bunch of times to find out, and when someone finally picked up the phone, when I got around to explaining I make videos for the internet, the most radioactive place in New York hung up on me. I hadn't intended on putting a clip here at the end of the video, but I also hadn't intended on releasing a video to so large an audience, so I just needed to say thank you so much. I am nowhere closer to doing this or anything uh, really in a financially sustainable way. But in the meantime, so I can keep doing this, the best thing anyone can do at the moment is to subscribe, to stay subscribed and to watch the videos. Uh, I will see you next week with another one. I have some exciting projects planned and I really can't wait to share them with you. Really, thank you. That means the world to me that you're here and I will see you soon. Thank you.